This is the enchanted quill from an old German folk tale. Our story doesn't begin with the magic quill, though. Our story begins in a castle kitchen with servants moving to and fro in the heat of the stone ovens. And among the servants worked a young cook who was renowned among her fellow servants not just for the delicious pastry she produced, but her, for her good humor and stories and the joy she brought that made the long, hot work days in the castle kitchen a joy. But along with this renown came unwanted attention from her fellow male servants. It would be safe to say that they had begun to wear out the stone in the narrow corridor that led to her tiny room, a cell really, against the cold outer wall of the castle. And so it was one night that she heaved a huge sigh of exasperation. And then, as if born on the wind of that sigh, a crow came and perched on the narrow sill of her window. Now, this was not the first time that a bird had perched on her window sill, but this crow spoke. The crow said, pluck five of my feathers. Well, the young cook sat in shocked silence. She had never dealt with a talking bird, and she had definitely never dealt with a talking bird that asked her to pluck five of its feathers. And so she sat. It was the crow who broke the silence. The crow said, I will turn your sighs of sadness to sighs of joy if you pluck five of my feathers. So after another few moments of hesitation, the cook reached up and, being of kind heart, began to gently pull on the crow's feathers. And the crow spread its wings open and dropped its head and showed no signs of pain as the young cook plucked the five feathers. And when she was done, the crow put its wings back at its side, raised its head, and said, Look at the feathers now. And to her amazement, the young cook found that four of the feathers had turned to scraps of parchment, and the fifth feather had turned to a magnificent quill pen. And the crow said, Whatever you write on those scraps of parchment with that quill pen will come to pass. And with that, the crow flew off. But no sooner had the crow flown off, the head chef of the kitchen slammed open the young cook's door without so much as a friendly knock or a good evening. And he looked at her and he said, Ha ha, my little tart, we are alone at last. Now, the young cook caught on to things quickly. And so she said, Oh, sir chef. Nothing can happen between us until the door is closed. And the chef said, ho, ho, and he reached out to close her door. But before he could do that, the young cook scrawled on the first piece of parchment. May he spend his entire night opening and closing doors. And that is exactly what he did. The master chef wandered the castle all night long, sleepless, opening and closing, opening and closing doors, one after the other, again and again. Finally, dawn broke and found the head chef exhausted in the courtyard of the castle and the butt of humor and laughter by his fellow servants. And no one chuckled more than the blacksmith. The blacksmith was a great bear of a man and with broad good humor. He had perfectly muscled arms and a perfectly bald head, and he liked to joke at his own expense and say, I have as much hair as I ever had. It just all migrated south to my shoulders and back. Well, the young cook went about her day with a small smile on her face, and that night she settled back into her room 
but no sooner had she settled back in than the king's horseman slammed open her door without so much as a knock or a hello, and he said, Ha ha, my little filly, the race is over at last. Well, the young cook knew that the king's horseman was more vain about his own mane of hair than any of the manes of the horses he cared for. And so she squinted at him, and she said, Sir Horseman, I believe you have a hair out of place. And the horseman began to feel across his head looking for the hair that was alleged to be out of place. And as he did that, the young cook picked up the second piece of parchment and wrote across it, May he comb his hair all night. And that is exactly what the king's horseman did. He spent his entire night in the castle courtyard with his comb, combing his hair over and over, looking for the one hair that was alleged to be out of place. And so it was, as his fellow servants began their work day, the next day he found himself the subject of their laughter and joking, and no one chuckled more than the blacksmith. And the young cook went about her day with a slightly bigger smile that day. And that evening she settled into her room. But no sooner had she settled into her room than the king's falconer slammed open the door and said, Ha ha, my little mouse, the hunt is over. And the young cook looked up at the falconer and said, Oh, Sir Falconer, you are the man I most need. And the falconer puffed up his chest and said, Ho ho, yes, I am. And the young cook said, Oh, Sir Falconer, there is a mouse that scriffles and scruffles and squeaks all the night long in the castle and makes it impossible for me to sleep. But you are the best man to hunt the mouse down and give me a good night's sleep. And before the falconer could even puff his chest up again, the cook quickly grabbed a third piece of parchment and wrote across it, May he spend the night circling like a falcon on wing. And that is exactly what the king's falconer did. He spent the entire night sleepless, circling the castle courtyard again and again, whispering, Here, mousy, mousy, here, mousy, mousy. And so when the sun came up, he found himself exhausted, in the castle courtyard, the butt of humor and jokes by his fellow servants. And no one chuckled more than the blacksmith. And so the young cook went about her day with her biggest smile yet, and she settled into a room that night. No sooner had she settled in than she heard a polite knock on her door. She rose and opened the door, and there in the hallway with his hands behind his back and a smile on his face was the blacksmith. And he said, Good evening, my lady. I have come to say hello, and well, I have a gift for you. Now, truth be told, the young cook had always kind of liked the blacksmith. And so she said, Well, thank you for coming to say hello, and I would love to see what you have. And the blacksmith pulled from behind his back a beautiful metal bouquet of flowers. The stems were slender but strong steel. The leaves were finely wrought copper with a beautiful patina of green. And the petals of the flowers were enameled in a host of colors. The that the blacksmith had saved aside when he enameled the armor of the nobility. And the young cook took the flowers and she looked at the bouquet from different angles and admired its beauty. And she thanked the blacksmith profusely for this gift. And the blacksmith smiled and nodded his head. And he said, I am so glad you like those. And I was hoping that we might take a walk along the mill stream tomorrow. And that is exactly what they did. The next day they took a walk along the mill stream that ran near the castle. And once again, truth be told, when the young cook 
slipped her arm through the blacksmith's and pressed herself ever so gently against him, that big bear of a man almost fainted. And he delighted in the stories that the cook had collected over the years and which she told so well. And she in turn delighted about the blacksmith's stories of the fine and beautiful projects he made on his own time when his normal work at the forge was done. And there were many more walks along the mill stream. And the blacksmith delighted in the pastry that the cook made for him and the stories that she told so well. And she in turn delighted at the beautiful creations the blacksmith made her, an entire forest of delicately wrought trees and animals that brought great light to her small room near the cold outer wall of the castle. And so it was that one night the young cook pulled out the last scrap of parchment in the enchanted quill, and on that last piece of parchment she wrote, May we forge strong bonds together. And for the rest of their long and happy days together, that is exactly what the cook and the blacksmith did.